everybody, Keith, aka Gator Guy 231. It is Tuesday, August 4th, and we are back for the richest game in football showdown on DraftKings between Brentford and Fulham. If you have no context to why this is the richest game in football or why it's so important, I'll just give you this a quick rundown. So in the championship, uh, which is the second tier of English football, three teams get promotion to the Premier League, three teams get relegated. Um, so in the championship, the third team that goes up is decided in a four-team playoff. Um, so Brentford and Fulham both have made it to the final, which is played at Wembley Stadium with the winner getting to go to the Premier League. And, you know, I don't have the exact number. I think like last year, like it's hundreds of millions of pounds as the difference. And this season, it's even more critical for these teams to get up because of COVID. And, you know, all these teams lost a ton of ticket revenue. And the championship, you don't have huge TV rates. So, you know, ticket revenue and gate revenue is insanely important. So, you know, this promotion is so critical, not only for the owners, for the fans, but the players, a lot of them are going to get huge wage increases by going to the Premier League. A lot of them, this is their dreams, their chance to actually get noticed. So, you know, if you want to ever watch a game where everybody cares beyond belief, like this is the one. And I love watching this game yearly for that reason. So let's jump into the DFS plays. Just do me a quick favor. If you guys are enjoying this, and especially if you know, you're part of our soccer contingent that keeps coming back, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Going to be having uh, Europa League, Champions League, all of the good soccer coming up the rest of this week um, on the channel with previews. Uh, can't, couldn't be more excited. I've actually missed doing the soccer previews. Um, just didn't really kind of needed a break. And, uh, you know, I didn't think the slates were worth doing um, the last week or so since Premier League uh, ended. But this and the next few are definitely worth it. All right, let's jump into the game. This should not be a long one. But so we have, first off, remember, this is Wembley. So there is no sort of home field advantage whatsoever. Uh, so Fulham is plus 266. Brentford is plus 123. Um, so Brentford is a slight favorite. It's only a two and a quarter total. Now, in the previous two matchups, Brentford won both. Won the first, uh, the last one at Fulham, two to zero. Previous one in December, um, one to zero. Possession was pretty equal, but Brentford did outshoot Fulham in both games, which makes sense. Brentford is one of the best attacking teams in the championship. Um, while you know Fulham is a good attacking team, but they are very methodical. Uh, like when you watch them, like they're not going to just like fire. Uh, on net, like, from distance, whereas Brentford just will shoot. So let's kind of go over the players and who you need to target. So one good thing that has kind of, you know, happened with both these teams is their set situations have gotten fairly easy. Um, for Fulham, um, during the playoffs, Harrison Reed has been taking all the sets. Um, he is super cheap, so he will be an easy cash plug. You know, he does sit deeper, though, so it's not like he possesses a ton of open value. But – at his price, and we'll go over that. Like, there's, he will be in almost all your lineups. Matthias Jensen is the taker for Brentford. Um, much like Ray, he also is a more defensive player, but his price is very nice as well. So you will be able to get both set takers in your lineup without any sort of sweat for cash. Now let's go over the side. So I'm gonna start on Brentford because I think that's gonna be the more DFS friendly side you want to target. So the front three are all electric players. Sai Ben Rama um, is pretty much known as like probably the most offensive player in the championship. He's super exciting, plays a lot of flair, and he is the guy that just does not care where he is at. He will gladly shoot the ball. Um, if you go back to his earlier logs this season, you're going to see a lot of crosses in there. That's because he was on some set chairs. He will not be taking corners, maybe like an occasional one to two, but he will not be on the major corner duty during this game. Um, but he will be in charge of a lot of creativity, um, a lot of attack. And I think that the left side is where you can attack Fulham. Joe Bryan's actually a very good defender, um, but Christie can, you know, has had his woes before. So Sai Ben Rama will be will probably the most popular player on the slate. And for good reason, um, his floor is pretty awesome. And, you know, I think that with the value I've already mentioned with Reed and Jensen, you're not gonna have any issues getting there. Ollie Watkins is also gonna be popular. Just know with Ali, you are going to be at his price. You're going to be goal or bust. Um, he is going to be playing through the center. Really, really dynamic player. But you are going to need a goal or an assist to get 
um, get to value with him. So I think he's kind of like fringe cash, more GPP. But when I look at this two and a quarter total, I just go, you know, do I really want to spend a ton of money on a central player that has to score? My gut would be no. Um, Brian Mbomo, uh also has been awesome this season. He's the less, least known of those two names, but that does not mean that, you know, he has lacked for goals or lacked for um, excitement this season. So he has finished the year 36 starts, 15 goals, seven assists. I think he'll be the least owned of the three and great, great, great GPP leverage. Um, most likely, from what I've read, everywhere I think I've seen, Emiliano Marcondes should be Josh De Silva, who's been one of their better midfielders this season. De Silva has also been better for DFS and open value. You may look at Emiliano Marcondes and go, you know, Keith, what the hell are you talking about? Like, look at his logs. A lot of those were when Jensen was out and Marcondes took corners. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, Last week, Marcona started, um, and it was all Jensen still. And I think Ben Rama took one corner. But uh, Marcona was just completely on open play value. Did score, but uh, Josh De Silva has been, you know, one of their better players all season, so I think he's going to come in. Dalsgaard is fine, but is not a crosser. More of the offense will go through Rico Henry when he attacks. So if you're going to be looking at these fullbacks for like a cash play, Henry is better than Dalsgaard. Um, Pinnock, Jansen, um, Norgard, you know, all just like last man in. I don't think you're going to need those type of punts on this slate. Um, I'll go over goalie in a second. On the form side thing, the first thing I want to point out, this is probably going to be Mitrovic. He has not been fit the last two games. He will be back. He was the golden boot winner for the top scorer in the uh, championship this season. So I think in the most important game of their season, we're going to see Mitrovic start. The only way he wouldn't start is obviously if they don't think that he's fit for 90 and they want to bring him on later. Um, four sets, Harrison Reed is going to take just about everything. Um, for the longest time this season, we've seen the likes of Joe Bryan, Anthony Knockhart, and even Kibono um, take sets. Last game, same lineup, you know, with the exception of if there's Mitrovic, but the same, you know, set guys. Reed took everything. And that was the way it was trending towards the end of the season. So I don't think there's any reason to think differently. So Harrison Reed is only, let's see if I still have it up. I don't have it up. I think it was 4,000, which is crazy. So you can just lock him into your lineups. Um, hell, I, I, I would truly say I'd probably lock him into almost all of my GPP lineups too, just because at 4,000 and with some of these higher price goal scorers and attackers, like you always need a plug. So why wouldn't you take the guy that's going to jump on like every set? Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Um, he's going to be that chalky yeah, at 4K. So Anthony Knockhart. So the Knockhart we used to know and love was the guy that would just like needlessly cross the ball into the box. The moment he got the ball, I was just be like, all right, I'm going to try to beat the guy. I can't beat him. I'm going to cross. He does not play that way anymore, much to my own chagrin. That being said, he is fairly cheap, and he's finally producing again. So he's only 6,600. In the last three games, without any goals or assists and without any set pieces, we have 7.3, 8, 8.9 for 6.6K. We will take that all day. So I think that's a fine cash play, um, especially for the price. Cabano, oh, I, I struggle with this play. So he is priced way up, 10.4K. And he had been taking some set pieces. Last week, he took none. If he would have not, if, if he didn't score, he had a goal. So like, great, like, Scoring a goal obviously takes a lot of skill. It's very tough to do. But without the goal, he would have finished 5.6 DK and absolutely destroyed you for his price. He's 10.4 this late. I think it's a fairly good fade in cash, um, but he will be owned. It's definitely a great fade in GPP, um, especially Fulham being the underdog. Cabano did leave last week with a knock. He is supposed to be fully fit. But if he's not going to have set pieces, he's an overpriced winger. Um, you know, and if it's like between him or Mitrovic, I'd rather play Mitrovic, um, you know, just the goal scoring upside. Uh, Big Josh Omama, o Onama, why did I say Omama? Onama, former Spurs guy. It's been great the last few weeks. Um, really stepped up when they needed him the most. Um, just gonna pull up his log here real quick. So, you know, the last four, he had 10 with an assist, 6.9, scored versus Cardiff. And 4.2. So I guess the four isn't as good as I thought it was. But, you know, if you want a lower own goal, that could be a play. 
Tom Kearney, don't be scared or don't be misled by the logs. He was also a guy that was taking some set pieces and has lost them completely. That said, he is a very, very talented player, the team captain. So you can go that route. Joe Bryan will be very popular in cash. He as well has some misleading logs because of set pieces. But that said, he has plenty of open play value. He's a hell of a tackler. He will get forward and cross the ball, you know, and still may take an occasional free kick. So he's only like 7.4. I think um, he will be one of the more popular players in cash. I think most people are going to start with like Reed, Jensen, and Brian for their cash lamps, which I may think makes plenty of sense. Final play, Cyrus Christie. So normally he's an attacking fullback. I really think that he's going to get pinned back here a little bit more and not have the freedom to go forward. If he overcommits, Ben Rama could just kill them on, on the counterattack. So I do think I'm probably going to lean away from Cyrus Christie just because of the fear that he's just, you know, given the instructions that he needs to be more defensive this game. Goalies, look, this total is two and a quarter. So I think the goalies are very in play. I think you just need to pick a side and go with it. Um, you know, the favorite is Raya. In Brentford and Fulham has not scored versus Brentford this season so you know that's probably the more obvious look I don't think many people are going to go goalie this this slate I think there's just too many guys up top that goalies can get kind of overlooked so that will definitely be you know if you're trying to spike this GPP that would be a great way to go especially with these teams playing more methodical you know maybe a goalie cap if it's one nothing a sub goal you know that can actually ship the GPP so that would just be my thoughts on goalie well anyhow guys I really hope this helped uh, Fun to be back. Going to be back tomorrow for Europa League is Wednesday and Thursday. And then we have the Champions League returning Friday and Saturday. It's going to be an awesome week. Kind of back to normal. Before we know it, the Champions League will be done. And then we have Premier League back. The soccer cycle never ends. I really hope that you enjoy this. Enjoy the videos coming forward. And give us a shot if you want to join FSI Soccer. It's an awesome room, um, probably our most, one of our most active rooms at FSI. So give it a try sometime. Uh, we'd love to have you. Um, take care and good luck today. Bye.